Hello and welcome to episode 11 of MMO Weekly, presented as always by MetsmerizedOnline.com. I'm your host, Sal Manzo, along with the Mr. Vacationer, Mike Mayer's back. Happy to have him. And we're joined by special guest once again, uh, former radio host of the Mets, Josh Lewin. Josh, thanks so much for taking some time with us. I appreciate you guys very much. Thanks for, uh, for looking me up and hooking me up. Absolutely. Well, uh, I don't know if everybody had on their scorecards uh, the Mets winning a rubber game against the Braves with Luis Guillorme batting cleanup today, but it happened. Uh, they outslugged the Braves. Chris Bassett was great, and I just got a huge series win against the you know uh, against Atlanta. Um, you know the pitching was awesome. Uh, Scherzer, obviously, even Peterson in the loss pitched great. Um, you know, I know a lot of people were were Panic City going into this series that the Mets you know were going to be losing in first place when they got out of there, whatever. But you know they hanged tough with the really you know good Braves team that's been red hot. And you know, Mike, I'll start with you real quick, just on you know your thoughts from the series and what you saw. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of fans would have taken two out of three going into Atlanta. I mean, um, the pitching matchups seemed like it would be tough for the Mets and them going into the series without Jeff McNeil and likely without Starling Marte, two of their best hitters, um, both All-Stars. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there was a ton of optimism. Like Tomas Nito talked today that the season was over going into the series before they had played. Um joking around about fan reaction on Twitter, but uh, yeah, I, I think you kind of touched on it. I think starting pitching was a big thing for this series. Um, the Met starters had a 1.96 year array in the series and they, they all looked great. And the Braves um, starters collectively didn't get an out past the fifth inning. So, I mean, when the Mets are able to do that with their offense, the keep working pitchers and knock them out. I mean, that, that obviously bodes well for not just that game, but a long series where you can get into the bullpen as much as possible. And that's kind of a trend of what the Mets have done all year offensively um, is work pitchers and get into the bullpen. And it worked well and it worked in this series. And the Mets even uh, took a play out of the Braves playbook with uh, some home runs in the series with Lindor, Escobar, and uh, even Guillaume hitting a home run. So they showed some uh, power that uh, we don't always see from the Mets. You know, definitely, Josh, I just, you know, want to get your thoughts. And, you know, are you surprised at all that the Mets were able to take this series from the Braves in Atlanta? Well, they've been doing all the little things so well all year and, and doing whatever it takes to take two out of three. They're kind of the kings of two out of three. Did not see Luis Guillorme hitting cleanup at any point in my lifetime, let alone in this series. And it dawned on me when I saw that we're basically almost six years ago to the date to the famous uh, uh, John Mayberry Jr. cleanup game, which kind of you know <laughs> launched a thousand ships, right? I mean, that was July 24 uh, against Clayton Kershaw and the Dodgers and forced the Mets to go into hyperdrive to bring Conforto up and trade for Cespedes and bring in Uribe and Kelly Johnson and all of that. So, uh, you know, this felt different. I mean, Guillaume is a guy who's been in the organization forever, had one home run his first thousand or so professional at bats, and he's hitting cleanup against the stinking Braves, and it worked. So, you know, uh, I, I love that about this year's team. They, they just seem to MacGyver their way through whatever they need to do, and it's, uh, it's gratifying. Absolutely. And before we kind of get into, I guess, you know, the the negative parts in the sense that, you know, they're really going to need to upgrade at DH come the trade deadline. Uh, you know, sure. Max Scherz is back two starts now. Um, better than ever, it seems like, um, you know, can you just kind of talk to his, uh, you know, bravado and like what, what he's now brought to the Mets? It seems like it's such an instant change to the culture and just, uh, you know, the team in general. I see him and Lindor joking back and forth, you know, in the dugout having fun. Um, you know, what what is a guy like that with you know, the gravitas now also, you know, backing it up with the big contract and, and, you know, pitching really well, you know, what does that mean, you know, for, for, you know, the, the, the Mets and, you know, moving forward. Yeah. I, I like that he stepped out and said, you got to feed off the the hatred of the other fan base. So, you know, and he did that the very first night he went out there. I, I love that mentality. I was with the, the Texas Rangers when they acquired Cliff Lee at the trade deadline in 2010. And it reminds me, I mean, this obviously wasn't a trade deadline thing, but uh, it's that kind of veteran, tough guy, I got this leadership that I think really does uh, rub off on everybody. So he came back at just the right time. Uh, you know, as Mike has pointed out, I've seen his tweets over the last month or so. I mean, the team basically had almost the exact same record with a man without him. So that speaks to the depth of, of the team itself. But you want to have him back just for that kind of uh, – lion headedness that that he provides. And I think that was on display in this series. 
Yeah, no, definitely. And, and you know, Mike, I want to get your thoughts just on even more so. It's funny, you know, Bassett had that rough stretch of like five starts a month or so ago where he wasn't pitching well. And it seems like Scherzer came back. He was still rehabbing, but he was in the dugout. And then all of a sudden Bassett kind of, you know, got back to form. So, you know, I just want to, you know, get your thoughts further on that. And it just seems, you know, Josh hit the nail on the head there, too. It just seems like they emulate each other and, you know, feed off of that. And, you know, Scherzer's a bulldog. And it seems like the other pitchers, you know, that come in line are, you know, trying to follow suit there. So I was wondering what you thought as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the other day, Bassett kind of talked about it, how he's never been on a team where starting rotation kind of talks the way they do. They they go through the little things. You, you've seen them in the dugout. Uh, SNY shows them. They've got, the, um, they've got the iPads and stuff, and they're going over different pitches and different mechanics and stuff like that. And Bassett talked about how, how big of a help that is to have someone like Scherzer go over it or for David Peterson, how big of a help it is to have Bassett someone like him go over. I mean, between Bassett and Scherzer and Taiwan Walker and DeGrom when he's healthy, th these are guys that have thrown a lot of big league innings and had a lot of success and Carrasco too, um, that have had a lot of success in the big leagues. And it helps, it helps guys like Peterson and Trevor Williams, T Tyler McGill and other guys that they've had come up and pitch well at like Odonis Medina, a young guy that's kind of come out of nowhere and pitched well for the Mets. Uh, Colin Holderman, same thing. Um, Drew Smith before his, recent rough spell. I mean, the Mets have gotten a lot of great performances out of some young, inexperienced arms this year. And I, I think definitely you can point to the, the leadership of guys like Bassett and Scherzer as to a reason why. And uh, also, also obviously have to talk about Jeremy Hefter and the job that he's done since becoming the Mets uh, pitching coach. Uh, the guys I talked about, I mean, a, a lot of that wouldn't happen without having someone like Hefter. Yeah, no, and to that point, David Peterson's been tremendous. I'm um, doing the math here, and I might be wrong, but last three starts, he struck out 26 batters. He's gone pretty deep in the games. Obviously, you know, was on the short side of it in game two. Um, you know, pitched five and a third, only gave up the two runs. I think one of them was just the, the two-run homer. Um, he's pitched really well, and it's, you know, an interesting thing to see when DeGrom does come back, and we'll obviously get to that. The man's finally pitching again, which is amazing. But, you know, uh, Peterson's been super serviceable, and I wonder, you know, what, if he keeps pitching like this to so someone like Carrasco might get, you know, kind of pushed out of the rotation to be more of the swing guy, you know, it'll be interesting to see there. Um, but from the pitching side, I wanted to transition, obviously talking about the offense, um, you know, on the positive side, I just wanted to talk, you know, a little bit about just Lindor's kind of season, Josh, get your take. I know fans have been, you know, kind of tough on him to, to start his Mets career last year. Didn't get off the way everybody wanted. Um, but he's got 64 RBIs already. It's, you know, surpassed his total from last year. And he's, you know, like uh, still top five in the league and his run producers. Mike, you tweeted out the, I, I don't know if it was today or, or yesterday, you know, his projected totals. He's projected, you know, shade under 30 home runs, uh, you know, over 100 RBIs. Plays phenomenal defense. That seems to never slump. So I just, you know, want to get your thoughts on, on the Lindor we're seeing now. And if this is someone, you know, we think that can, you know, expect to see long term now in this long deal here. Yeah, I mean, for me, if you got a shortstop that's a 30 slash 120 guy and is making plays defensively, that's the end of the conversation. And uh, whatever people wanted him to be last year, I would think that hopefully they can just kind of get over it and appreciate what he's bringing right now. So, uh, you know, it's funny how that stuff works out because, I mean, Jimenez has gone on to have an all star year in Cleveland anyway. The Guardians had Jose Ramirez, and I mean, they were kind of set. And, and liked what they had in the infield anyway. So Mets get what they need. Uh, you know, Guardians are fine. And when, when it's kind of a win-win situation like that, I don't know why you should should be upset at any at any corner. Absolutely. And Mike, I just, you know, uh, want to get your thoughts on, you know, Lindor's start to the year. I know you've been someone who's not critical, but, you know, has been on the side of that he was going to come around that last year was kind of, a, you know, a, uh, an outlier. So I'm just, you know, want to get your thoughts to his uh, start to the year. Yeah. I mean, Lindor's talked about a little bit, just being comfortable and we've talked about it too. Uh, Carlos Beltran, his first year with the Mets, he did the same type of thing. He struggled. And then after that, he took off. I mean, yeah. What, what, what else can you say about Lindor? I mean, he's been batting in a good spot. I mean, there's been a lot of guys on base, but he's also hit pretty well in those situations and he's come up and played great defense. I mean, just today, um, in the fourth inning, he had a huge play defensively, and obviously he had the three-run home run. So I, I, I still, I mean, maybe you'd like to see a little bit more offensively out of him, just that from an OPS standpoint, uh, 
he's he's a little under his career norm right now but i mean it, it's tough to get angry like josh talked about when a guy a shortstop is projected to hit uh, 29 home runs on 116 rbis and likely in the conversation for gold glove i mean whatever the number is that that's what the mets traded and extended him for he, he's doing what they got him for and uh, he, he's a big reason why the mets are in the situation they are in right now i mean Think about this series when he had five hits, knocked in four runs, and scored three runs. Um, they don't win this series without him. Uh, Pete's cold right now. Um, so they need him to step up in these situations, and that's exactly what he did in the biggest series of the season for the Mets. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you just kind of touched on, you know, Alonzo hitting a cold streak here. Um, you know, something that's been cold for the Mets the whole year has, has been a DH position. I know, you know, Sandy Olson was on John Heyman's podcast the other day and was talking about it just as far as, you know, all year they've been waiting for a couple of guys to, you know, uh, get right and kind of, you know, uh, fill that position. I'm sure he, you know, was talking more about J.D. Davis and Don Smith than anybody else. And I was talking about how they haven't gotten that. Um, Josh, you know, I'm just curious, you know, is there anyone that you have in mind maybe that you think the Mets should try and target at the deadline, you know, as far as DH-wise, um, you know, that they can, you know, um, bolster the offense a little bit. You know, the, the pitching has been great so far, but the last few weeks the offense has sputtered a bit, and I think that seems to be, besides the bullpen, you know, the biggest need. So I was curious your thoughts there. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. Some of the teams that you thought would be active sellers, I mean, I mean, look at the Orioles haven't lost since July 2nd. They're not yep. getting rid of Trey Mancini or anybody else right now. So uh, they'll, they'll figure something out. I mean, August 2nd is, uh, you know, not quite around the corner, but we're getting close. And I do agree that, that one more bat, one more arm or two things that are worth going shopping for. Uh, yeah, but, you know, you guys touched on it a little bit earlier, this whole – the thing that Tomas Nito was kind of joking about, this chicken little, the sky is falling thing that all of a sudden is just kind of beset everybody. And I know nobody wants to, you know, Aaron Rodgers got killed for it when he did the whole relax thing years ago, right? You know, when the Packers were on whatever it was, two-game losing streak. Football, you know, it, it's a little bit more in play to have a chicken little head about things because there's only 16 games. There's 162 of these bad boys here, and you, you know you're certainly not going to win anywhere close to all of them. So I look at what the Yankees are going through or, or have gone through. They lost three in a row. They were behind real quick to Cincinnati as we're taping this thing right now in danger of a fourth straight loss, and they're going to be fine. You know, so uh, it, it's one of those things where you can't overreact. But to your point, the DH thing has been a, a bit of a black hole. I think they should go shopping for something. Definitely. And, and it's funny, you, you mentioned as far as, you know, oh, the sky is falling thing. You know, I think another thing we everyone should kind of realize the six playoff teams, right? You know, obviously you want to win the division. I'm not saying that, but there's three wild card spots, you know, and, and for a team that or I look at like the Dodgers and the, the Giants last year, one team had 108 wins, one team had 100, you know, it, it you got to play. And then, you know, that little wild card series, you know, it's a pain. But, you know, now there's there's three wild card teams, you know, you you want the buy I get and all that. But, you know. It's uh, there's good teams in the NFL, you know, with the Braves. So it's it's not the the worst thing in the world if they do get the top one. Or two yeah, I mean, the, spots. the the short series actually don't worry me. I mean, if you if you end up in a best of three, you got Scherzer and Degrom and whoever's hottest in your rotation at that point. That's fine. I'm not worried about that. I'm more worried about do you have the depth for the seven game series you're right. going to ultimately have to win. And uh, you know, not that it looks like Toronto is a World Series champion type team right now, but. You know, I mean, a, a little thing to consider, for example, is do you want to trade for somebody who's not vaccinated? What, right. what if you end up playing a seven game series in the World Series against Toronto yep. and your big DH that you just brought in is an anti-vaxxer and can't go? You know, I mean, so things like that are, are in play. Right. And uh, but, but it definitely makes for interesting talk. Yeah. To touch on the um, DH, I think one name. Like, uh, well, Josh said, Mancini is a name that's been talked about and now the Orioles are playing well. So, um CJ Cron is another name that's been up and the Rockies have kind of said recently, whether they fall through or not, that they might not be sellers completely. They might try to just keep some of their guys. I think uh, Josh Bell is a name to watch. I mean, he's mm -hmm. had a great year for the nationals, got a 154 OPS plus as we're uh, taping this. And uh, if you listen to Sandy Alderson, the conversation you're talking about that he had with John Heyman and Joel Sherman, when he talked about the DH and then when he got talking about trading, he kind of specifically mentioned um, trading within the division and how that's definitely something that's in play. And that was when he was talking about DH. So, I mean, he was obviously 
they have Josh Bell, Nelson Cruz on the mind. Um, Josh Bell is obviously the the better player there now. Cruz has kind of taken a step back the last two years. Um, and even so, like Alderson talked about, even with Bell having a big year, I mean, he's a f- first base DH type that's uh, pending free agent. That's that's really not going to cost that much in this market. And that I think that's definitely a guy that the Mets should target. And it, it's a good fit, too, because then he can – he can spell um, Pete at first base too, and uh, basically do what Dom Smith is supposed to be doing this year, um, which hasn't happened because Dom just hasn't performed. So I think uh, if I, if I'm targeting a bat, I think Josh Bell is really the guy that I would go after. Absolutely, and then you know on the relief pitching side, which I think everyone kind of agrees as well that that's something they need to add another piece. Um, they go into a team uh, to go play the Cubs in Chicago that has a reliever. Pitched in New York before, veteran guy that might not cost too much in David Robertson. Josh, a name like that, I was wondering, you know, get your thoughts. You think that might be a good fit? Yeah, that's a fine fit. I mean, Aaron Loop is on a team that's, you know, on a, on a complete down mm-hmm. in, in Anaheim. I mean, bringing him back or any of those Angels relievers, I think, are, uh, are worth trying to pluck. But, yeah, as I said, I, I think you, you can't go wrong with uh, – I, I always go back to 2015. I mean, Addison Reed – became a really important piece as it turns out. And, uh, you know, to, to get that veteran arm, whoever that might be, um, you know, I hope Seth Lugo bounces back and and can do what he's capable of doing, but, uh, you, you're never going to be upset with yourself for having acquired that one extra arm, uh, heading down the stretch. No question about that. Absolutely. And before we kind of move on to, um, you know, the Grom's rehab starts and, you know, the latest from all that, um, you know, I, one thing I just wanted to comment on as far as watching the Braves from this week, and I didn't realize how much they struck out. And uh, that makes me feel good long term for the summer. Um, I think the Mets match up, you know, they're pitching once they get the ground back with Scherzer on the ground at the top. And, you know, even with Walker and Bassett, I think that sets them up very well matchup wise. I don't know, uh, you know, what you both think, Mike, I'll get your comments real quick. But I was just something, you know, that I thought of this weekend that I think, you know, long term for, you know, down the stretch will bode well for them. Yeah, I mean. As we saw, the Braves are kind of a home run strikeout mm-hmm. offense. Um, yeah, you can you can certainly take advantage of that in situations, but you can also see where their pitching is good enough to keep it right. close in games, and then you have Matt Olson or any number of seven other guys that can hit that are going to hit twenty twenty five home runs. So I mean, yeah, I, I certainly Degrom, Scherzer, those guys. I mean, we even saw Bassett today take advantage of it quite a bit um yeah they're going to be a team that strikes out a lot and maybe that's something they kind of target at the deadline too because i mean obviously they're going to be looking to trade something i mean i i tough to say that with albies hurt the braves are going to keep rolling out robinson cano i hope longer um so yeah i I think they'll obviously target a bat too and it might be some guy that gets on base kind of doesn't strike out as much as the rest the rest of that team yeah, Atlanta is definitely grip it and rip it. They're second in the majors in strikeouts, but their pitchers are also second in the majors right. in, in what they've achieved. They don't have a sack bunt all year. I mean, all that, right? I mean, it's just the, the very modern get up there, you know, walk in a home run kind of team. And the Mets, when they're going well, don't walk a lot of people, don't give up a lot of home runs. So it, I think it is a good matchup, but that's with current construct. I think Mike's point is let, let's see who Atlanta goes after too. Absolutely. And, you know, I want to move on for kind of from the Mets uh, on the big league club to someone that's, you know, making their rehabs It's Jake DeGrom, obviously he's made two already. Um, he's with uh, is triple A tomorrow, Syracuse uh, making a start as with Tabor, uh, should I say on Friday um, that I believe he's making the start. Mike can correct me if I'm wrong, but Thursday, you know, Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Um, you know, DeGrom's had two starts. Obviously it's, it's very controlled, very limited, um, you know, a little inch and a little bit each forward, but it sounds like it's the same DeGrom throwing a hundred, striking out the world. Those poor double A or, you know, those poor, you know, uh, single A hitters there that he had a face that had a face when he was in St. Lucie. But, you know, hopefully this is the third of like four or five rehab starts, right? You have him get him back after the first week of the break. And hopefully, you know, he's ready to rock. But Josh, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see your thoughts once he is here. And it seems like it's coming sooner rather than later. You know, do you think that the Mets are going to be more cautious to, you know, uh, 
right, you know, on a strict pitch count or an innings limit or something like that tool, you know, let's say the playoffs bar and they get there or whatever, or do you think that they're worried that this guy might not be here next year and let's, you know, let him ride and get whatever the heck we can out of him? Yeah, it kind of reminds you. I mean, I hate to keep bringing it back to 2015, but, you know, that's my favorite year in the booth of, of the seven that I spent up there with, with Howie. Uh, there, you know, there was all the drama with Matt Harvey and, you know, whether it was the agent, horning in or whatever it was, but uh, it's going to be very tough down the stretch not to just ride the heck out of Jake if he says he feels good. But first things first, let's see how he actually performs. I think he'll perform just fine at this uh, uh, sold out start at at Syracuse on Thursday. Uh, They, you know, they got rid of all their tickets like almost immediately. It'll be, you know, he'll come back. Remember in spring training, he came in throwing one Oh one a couple of years ago, just to prove to everybody. So, uh, I guess I'm curious to see what it looks like in mid August or late right. August. I think mm-hmm. yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll come out knowing I'm sure fully, they only expect him to go 80 pitches or five innings or whatever it is for a little while. But at some point he's going to want to get turned loose. They're going to want to turn him loose. So what that looks like in mid to late August, is he that Jacob DeGrom with eight innings of three hit one run ball and 13 strikeouts. We can kind of revisit the conversation then. Yeah, I think Josh brings up a great point. And one of the things you have to think of is that DeGrom, as far as we know, still intends to opt out. So Mm -hmm. he's going to kind of want the same exact thing that the Mets want, and that's innings. I mean, that's obviously what's going to help him, assuming he's pitching like Jacob DeGrom, is he needs to get as many innings under his belt, too, to prove to whoever his suitors are that he's healthy and ready to be Jacob DeGrom. Yeah, tomorrow, I think he'll probably pitch about four innings tomorrow, and then next start five innings and then the Mets kind of decide what you want to do from there. Um, And obviously kind of depends on what's going on with DeGrom. But at that point we're we'll be about 13 months out from when he's pitched. So um, he isn't showing any sign of rust. Like you said, he hit one Oh one with his fastball hit 94 with a slider the other day. Uh, He looks just fine. Just keeping him healthy and seeing how many innings you can get out of him. I think by the time he throws four tomorrow, five in his next start, I mean, once he's ready to throw six innings, I mean, that's basically when you're ready to be a major league pitcher at this point, at this stage in baseball. So I think that that's when you bring him up. Um, so I think two more, two more rehab starts and then you, you see him in the big leagues. Yeah, no, that, I mean, that would be, you know, incredible and whatever they get out of him, you know, until, you know, September in the playoffs, it's going to be great. The first turn in the rotation, you know, when it shares with the ground and all that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you know, I wanted to, I guess, you know, real quick talk about as far as this, you know, four Mets are have four, you know, players going to the all-star game All reserves. Obviously there's no starters. Um, that's something Josh, I'll, I'll start with here. Is that something that, that, overly excites you get you know get you going anymore is it more of you want to see the Mets good winning championships that's all that matters right yeah it's funny I mean when the team was mediocre to terrible I would really look forward to okay who's in the all-star game and can they represent but we know they're going to be on the national stage in October hopefully deep into October so uh you know it's nice to see guys rewarded for it it's always a stop down when it's their turn but this isn't like you know when, when David Wright uh, you know, tripled in Pittsburgh and stuff. And it's like, wow, that's like the highlight of the whole summer. This is just <laughs> just something to, to kind of, you know, maybe pass by and check in on is, is where I'm at with it. Mike. Yeah. I mean, the Mets, we knew the Mets were going to have a bunch of all-stars this year, kind of dependent on who, uh, I still think it's kind of weird that Brandon Nimmo was second in F4 in the national league for outfielders and he didn't make it. Yeah. Uh, obviously that's kind of a bad thing for him too. Cause again, another pending free agent. So that's a, that's a selling point for his agent. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you could have definitely had him on the roster. You could have had Walker. He had an argument too, but I think all the guys that are on there deserved. And uh, it's nice to see. I mean, regardless of how many made the all-star team, I think the biggest focus for the Mets and during the all-star break is going to be Pete Alonso on the home run derby. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that's what everyone's going to be watching for to see if he can three peep. And uh, as another note, during the all-star break, we should talk about a little bit that Francisco Alvarez and Mark Vientos are going to be playing in the futures game too. So that that's another thing for Mets fans to watch. And also during the all-star break is the draft this year too. And the first night on Sunday, the Mets actually have four picks on the first night. Um, they have the 11th pick, the 14th pick, the 52nd pick, and the 75th pick. Uh, 
that's it. So it's a big, kind of a big time for the Mets organization um, for, during the all-star break. And uh, it'd be interesting to see uh, what happens. Absolutely. So do you have Alonzo going three straight? Is he winning it again? Yeah. I mean, at this point, someone, another broadcast was even talking about it today and they're like, I, it's Pete Alonzo. I, you, you have to, it just has to be him until it's not him at this point. Yeah. Josh, you're, uh, do you think Pete's going to win out the third straight? Yeah, I mean, it's a crapshoot, right? I mean, if somebody <laughs> else gets hot, then, uh, you know, Via Condillo is my darling at that point. But, uh, you know, he's, he's got his, his groove. He's got his, uh, you know, the BP pitcher that uh, makes sense for him. So I, I wouldn't bet against him. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, it, and- I think it's pretty interesting to think about now that Dave Jouse throwing to yep. him when Dave Jouse isn't even with the Mets. He's in the National Organization now. And he was actually just um, traveling with um, – in the London series the, oh, where wow. they're trying to pump the major league baseball, he was just over there for that. And then is flying to LA to pitch to Alonzo. So it'll, it'll be a little different this year, but he, he told Pete, as long as he gets him two coffees during it and a uh, case of Bud, Bud light after he's all set. Love it. Love it. All right. So we're going to, you know, real quick, um, do our little minors recap, uh, Mike, before I get into how Alvarez is doing, Josh, just want to get your thoughts on Alvarez, you know, so to this point, you know, how excited for you, I, you know, might not be this year or whatever, but excited for the future at that position for the Mets. Yeah. I mean, full disclosure guys, whenever, I mean, since the, the Mets pulled the plug on, on Mets in the morning, I've been a, a lot less, um, in tune with what exactly is going on in the minor leagues. It's kind of, you know, not my my bailiwick for the last month and a half or so, but it's tough not to keep your eyes open for Alvarez. You know, when I right. saw him in spring training and he's just a, you know, an interesting looking guy. Cause he, you know, I mean, he doesn't have like that sculpted body yet. I mean, he's still got baby fat cause he's a baby mm-hmm. and, you know, but, but the, the power is there. The, the stroke is there. Uh, you know, the defense obviously has come on. He's a fascinating prospect. And if that's the guy that makes sense to, to throw into the mix, then, that's cool. Uh, if not, I don't think people should look at it like it's weird because the guy's, you know, the guy's 20 years old. Right. Yeah. So Mike, I mean, uh, yeah. Alderson kind of touched on it and made it pretty clear that for him to be in consideration to be at the big league level this year, they wanted him to see him at triple a. And I mean, we're only talking after today, you'll have like 25, 26 at bats and triple a, um, he struggled to this point, which I don't think is a big deal. He's going to go on a big tear just like he did in double a. And uh, yeah, I think, I think, I mean, in a perfect world, the Mets would kind of not like to see Alvarez this year. It's be- that's because they've acquired a bat so that they don't need Alvarez at the major league level. Um, but it will be interesting to see what the Mets do. I mean, McCann is hurt again. He was on the DH before um, Nito is now the primary catcher and, uh, I don't want to bash on Patrick Mazika, but he's he's not really a major league caliber catcher. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if the Mets do try to go out there and get a veteran at the deadline if McCann is going to be out long term, or if they if they do in September dip into Alvarez um, and try to get him some at bats as the DH and catch a couple of games. But uh, yeah, I mean, and then I mentioned Vientos, of course, um, he had his 16th home run tonight as we're recording this, and he's the other name that fans are like well internally hey we could have a dh here uh, but I, the mets again haven't really discussed bringing him up quite yet so I mean, he's, he's a young guy too so I, I think the mets are going to look externally for that help at dh but it is nice to have a guys like alvarez and vientos in triple a if that's what they decide to do yeah and i don't mike you probably know better than me but it, is degrom uh pitching to alvarez tomorrow uh, I mean, they, they don't have a lineup out yet. Okay. I mean, I, I think I would be kind of surprised if they didn't have. Um, everyone has kind of talked about, all the pitchers have talked about how well Alvarez has done this year in controlling pitching. And obviously, I mean, you hope that he's going to catch DeGrom for a long time. So I, I, I think you'll pair up with him. And that will obviously be fun to hear about DeGrom's side of it, um, pitching to Alvarez. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's a uh, fun stuff on the horizon all around. Um, Josh, thanks so much for joining us this week. Uh, good luck in the big 10 this year. Um, yeah, how about that, that, Actually, uh, we'll we got, 
couple more years before uh, we 2024, get right. Well, in a yeah. couple, we'll get Still you back to when... Pullman for, a, for another year or two. But then there we'll we go. Trade up uh, Piscataway for Pullman for, uh, for UCLA. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great rest of the summer. Hopefully, we'll have you back, uh, you know, as the playoff push continues here in, you know, in August and September. Um, but, you know, everyone tune in next week for all the latest from, you know, what's going on in Metsland. And until then, uh, don't forget to get Metsmerized. <laughs>